Hi everyone. Welcome to Connor Bayou County Park. My name is George Yeager. I'm a naturalist guide for Ottawa County Parks and Recreation. And today we're going to read a story about a young boy who wants to become a voyageur. In a very appropriate place in the story, they're going to be having a rendezvous. And Connor Bayou is a location where traders and trappers used to meet and rendezvous to trade goods and furs. So, The Red Sash by Jean E. Penzawal, with pictures by Nicholas de Bon. <clears throat> the sun is rising over Nanabiju, who lies sleeping on the great sea, Gichigumi. My sister Isabel and I wake up. I can see mother through the entrance of our wigwam. She and grandmother are cooking our breakfast over the fire, and the smell is making my stomach rumble with hunger. Isabel and I dress quickly, careful not to wake the baby who is still asleep on a warm bear hide. See if you guys can see the outline of Nanabiju through the wigwam door. Nanabiju is the sleeping giant. Across the river at Fort William, I see the smoke from many small fires rising above the canvas tents of the voyageurs. It is the time of rendezvous when winter traders paddle to Fort William with their packs of furs to meet the Northwest Company canoes coming from Montreal bringing supplies. Around the campfires, the voyageurs trade stories about storms and fog on the big lakes, about portages and bears, and racing across Lake Winnipeg. Mother and I push our canoe into the water to cross the Kaministiqua River. I am not strong enough to carry two packs over a portage, but I am strong enough to help my mother paddle our canoe. Someday, I will carry three packs over the mountain portage at Kakabika Falls, and I will have many stories to tell when I come to rendezvous. But today, we will work at Fort William. I greet two voyageurs who stand on the wharf smoking their pipes, their bright red sashes blowing in the breeze. My father is a guide in a canoe du Nord, just like the ones they paddle. Last fall, he left to follow the N river highways beyond Lac La Pluie to Fort Gibraltar on the Red River. Maybe he will even go as far as the Athabasca. It is a hard life. Some do not come back for rendezvous. The winters are long and cold. Food is difficult to find, and some of the rivers are wild. But someday I will go. I will paddle on the lake with many islands and see the great plains where the buffalo live. Then I too will be a voyageur. There you can see all of Fort William. All around us the fort is waking up. In the bakery, bread is rising and the oven is hot. Mother helps in the kitchen and she sets the baby's kikanagan down where she can see it. Isabel works in the dairy. I go to look for eggs at the farm. The rooster struts about on the gate to the pig pen, boasting in a loud voice. Inside the barn, the hens scratch for cracked corn on the ground. I fill a large macuck with eggs and carry it to the kitchen. Isabel is there too with butter and fresh buttermilk for the busy cook and his helpers. There will be a feast tonight in the great hall as more and more gentlemen arrive for rendezvous. Maybe my father will arrive today too. The Tikkanagan is a cradle board and if you look, let's see, right here you can see the baby on a tikkanagan 
leaned up against that barrel so that mom can keep an eye on it. And a macuk is a birch bark basket like the boy is carrying the eggs in. The blacksmith's hammer bangs against the anvil and I can smell the sweet scent of freshly cut wood as the carpenter cuts a log for the palisade wall. Some of the voyagers are helping him. Would you like to go to the islands? asks John as Isabel and I stop for a drink at the well. John is the doctor's son and he is older than I am. He is looking at me but I think he is asking Isabel. There are hair on the Traverse Islands. It has been a long time since grandmother has cooked hare. How many of you know what a hare is? A hare is a rabbit, like an eastern cottontail rabbit, only with longer ears and longer back legs. We push our canoe into the river and paddle out onto the great sea. It is not far. I pretend that I am a voyager and paddle hard to a little bay on the largest island. We lift our canoe out of the water and gently place it on the rocky beach. I go to set my snares on the furthest side of the island. The scent of warm earth and pine fills the air as I explore the woods and climb the great cliffs. From here I can see across the big bay. A brigade of canoes from Montreal is nearing the feet of Nanabiju. I wait and watch. The canoes are coming closer. The voyageurs are paddling hard. Behind me the sky has grown dark. Black clouds boil up with eerie green beneath them. I can feel the storm coming long before it touches the waters of the lake. I quickly check my snares and find a fat brown hare. Scrambling down the cliff to the beach, I look for Isabel and John. I cannot see them. Have you ever had that experience where a storm snuck up on you when you were outdoors? Just then the storm hits. The trees behind me moan and groan in loud angry voices. The wind pushes them until their trunks bend and snap. I find shelter among the boulders along the shore. Out on the lake the waters are churning to foam. The icy green waves hurry and tumble over each other not knowing which way to go. I can see them crashing against the rocks of the point with a surge of white spray. Rain is falling, but I can barely feel it, for the wind has caught the waves, picking them up and dropping them over me until all my clothes are soaked. I stumble over the boulders around the island. From here I can see the voyageurs' canoes. They are much closer now. These men are not singing. They are paddling hard to get to the shelter of the island. In the middle of one canoe sits a gentleman holding on to his beaver felt hat. Can you see the dark outline of the canoe in the upper corner? I scramble along the slippery shore and wade out into the water, hoping to catch the bow of the first canoe but I lose my footing and fall. The water is so cold. When I get back on my feet, the gentleman's canoe is nearly on top of me, so I grab the bow and steady it. It is almost full of water. The voyagers jump out and lift the gentleman ashore. I can see now that the birch bark bottom is torn. The other canoes are waiting offshore. They are piled with packs holding blankets, beads, trinkets, pots, and tobacco to trade with the Indians for furs. 
it is too rocky for the canoes to come to shore here and to squall and the squall already is easing. They will continue on to Fort William, but the gentleman's canoe cannot go any further today. Those canoes are made out of birch bark, and though birch bark is light and very and relatively durable, it can't handle being bashed up against a rock. Well, you are a fine young voyageur, says the gentleman. He has a strong Scottish accent. I would sign you on, but it seems I'm without a canoe. I almost smile. Just then, Isabel and John arrive. They have been looking for me. I stand up straight and tall, ignoring the wind and wet. We have a canoe, I say. It is across the island in the shelter of the bay. We can paddle you to Fort William. The wind is calmer and the rain has stopped. It has been a long journey for the gentleman and Fort William is so close. I sit in the bow of the canoe with the hair lying at my feet. My red paddle is flashing as it dips in and out of the sparkling blue water. The gentleman sits in the middle and the Northwest Company flag is flying. John and Isabel paddle too. The waves are still large and we have to work hard to reach the mouth of the river. As we approach, we begin to sing. En roulant, ma boule roulant, en roulant, ma boule. Cannon fire announces our arrival and, bab and bagpipes play in the greeting. Did you hear the song that, that I sang there that's in the text? That's a song that the voyagers would sing while they were paddling their canoes. But before we reach the wharf, I hear an echo of our song. Roulez roulant, ma boule roulant, en roulant, ma boule roulant, en roulant, ma boule. And then voyagers whoop and cheer as they turn the bend of the river red paddles flashing as they dip in and out of the sparkling blue water. There are six canoes from the north and I see my father sitting in one of them. A crowd has gathered to greet the canoes. Mother is there. Father smiles at her and then looks at me and Isabel sitting in the canoe with the gentleman. I will have a good story to tell around the campfire tonight. But first I help them to unload the packs of furs that have traveled from deep in the wilds of the Indian territories. Wolf, muskrat, deer, fox, buffalo, mink, but most important, beaver. I can only carry one pack at a time. Father has gifts for us all. There is ribbon for the baby's tikkanagan, an ivory comb for mother and for Isabel, a fabric pouch filled with colorful beads. Father turns to me and I wait eagerly. You have grown, my little voyageur, he says. It looks like you will be needing this sooner than I expected. My father hands me a bright red sash, the sash of a voyageur. How exciting that must be. It is dark, but no one at the fort is sleeping. Inside the great hall, the women have joined the men. The fiddler is playing a reel, and the elegantly dressed gentlemen dance with the girls of the fort. Mother and father are dancing too. Isabel and John are dancing in the square. The voyageurs dance along with them. They are telling stories about cold winters and wild animals, long portages and turbulent rapids. They are wrestling and playing games. They are happy to be here after such a long winter 
after paddling many hard days. They are happy to celebrate rendezvous. Can you imagine how joyful it would be after all of that hard work? My bright red sash blows in the breeze. I begin to dance too. And that's the story of the red sash. Thanks for joining me.